Well, praise the Lord. Amen. We're glad and thankful tonight that we can come back and visit with you for a little while and just let you know Jesus loves you unconditionally. Doesn't make any difference who you are, where you live at, what you've been into. He loves you anyway. John 3, 16, he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm glad today that he gives us everlasting life. Now, we, we've got to make a choice. Do we want everlasting life or do we want everlasting death? But you see, the choice is ours. God made a choice, and he made a way of escape. But we've got to accept it and walk in it. And so I'm glad today that Jesus made a way where there didn't seem to be a way. I mean, there wasn't no way for us to be saved unless we went back under the old law, done a lot of things and kept a lot of uh, ceremonies and all, all of those things. But you see, Jesus made it very easy and very simple. He says, all you got to do is just believe. Believe, just believe. And if we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, who took away the sin, who takes away uh, the sin of the world, then we can be saved. <laughs> and so my, I'm, I'm glad for that today. If salvation costs, if we could buy it, everybody would try to have it. But you know, it's something that you can't buy. It's a gift of God. And God gives it away freely. And I, I didn't understand all of that when I got saved, but I, you see, I, I'm still saved because I made a vow. I told God, I said, I'm here to stay. I'm not quitting. I'm not backing up. I'm not turning around. I'm here to stay. And so I, I'm glad that I made that vow. Why? Because he tells us in his word, it's better not to make a vow than to make one and break it. Amen. And so I, I, I'm glad for the goodness and the greatness of God today. My prayer is that if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, you might get acquainted with him uh, before it's eternally too late. And one day it will be too late. And if we haven't made, made any preparations, we'll have to listen to him say, depart from me. You workers of iniquity, I know you not. Yes, I believe today that it breaks the heart of God whenever he looks down in this old sin-cursed world and knowing what, it, that, what that he'd done that he sent the best that heaven had to come down and take our sins and he cast them into the sin forgetfulness and God does not remember them against us no more. Now, that doesn't mean that the devil's going to let you get by because every time he gets a chance, he'll slap you in the face with it. And that doesn't mean that people are going to let you get by because they like to remind you of the bad things that you've done in your past to, to try to make you feel bad. Uh, you see, we've got that idea. If we can tear somebody else down, that makes us look better. Uh, but I'm glad today uh, that Jesus doesn't tear anybody down. He wants to lift them up, give them joy unspeakable and full of glory. And so I'm glad for that today. My, my, we thank God for all of our listeners. And yeah, we're entering into the Christmas season. And I, I, so we just need to pray that uh, God will intervene in people's hearts and lives. Why? Because around Christmas time, there's a lot of people commit suicide. And you'd wonder why, because it ought to be the happiest time of the year, uh, because that's when Jesus was born. Oh, I know he wasn't born on the 25th of December, but thank God that's the day that we celebrate. And, and so I'm glad that and God's still God yet today. And he's still giving life to people, uh, people that will accept it. And so I'm glad that, uh, that he's no respecter of person. And so you pray today that God will intervene. I want to send it out uh, to all of our uh, shut-ins today, those that are sick and afflicted. No, we can remember all the names of, of the people that we know, but uh, we know they're sick, and uh, we've talked to them. 
we've visited with them. We've been around them. And I know not as much as we used to, but I remember my wife, she gets, we're just getting a little older and I, we don't get around as fast as we used to. It take, it, we spend too long in one place just trying to get started. And that's the reason why that, I, that it takes us so long to get there. And so I'm glad that God is merciful to us. And so you pray that God will just use us as instruments that His love and His Spirit can flow through, that whenever we testify to people, when we tell them about the good things of God, they'll know that God is really God, that He's alive today, and He sits on His throne, and Jesus sitting on the right hand of the Father, and He's making intercession for you and for me, uh, for the children of God, for the church of the living God. Well, praise God. But now, I, I said that, now let me say this, but not everybody that's in the church is a part of the church. Why? Because there's a lot of people there that's never had an experience with Jesus. They've never had a born-again experience. And so, you see, uh, people, uh, whenever we have an experience with God, then we've got something to brag about, something to talk about, something that will... Uh, it ought to excite everybody whenever we begin to testify uh, to the goodness and the greatness of God. And so I'm thankful today uh, for those that is, stands by us and helps us out, those that uh, is, even hollers at us and uh, thanks us for being on here. We thank God for each one of them. We'd like to pray with you and pray for you that God will bless you. Your heart will be lifted up and you can get something out of service tonight. And we thank God, Roscoe, and I will be able to be back with us tonight. And uh, even Brother Ron sitting over here uh, in the corner trying to hide. So you pray uh, that God would just have his way in our hearts and our lives. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for the mercy and the grace of God. We thank you, Father, that each time we come, God, you give us traveling mercy and traveling grace. And so we thank you for it and we praise you. And we know without you, God, that we couldn't do anything. But Heavenly Father, with you, all things are possible. I pray, Father, as the broadcast goes out across the airwaves, uh, Heavenly Father, that people will feel on the other end uh, what we're able to to feel on this end uh, because we know uh, that the Spirit travels. Uh, he's a ministering Spirit and He ministers to people's hearts. Uh, and so I pray today and uh, God would speak to those uh, that are lost and undone. Uh, that He'd visit those uh, and anoint them, God, uh, the sick and afflicted. Uh, Heavenly Father, uh, they can be lifted up. Uh, they can be healed. Uh, able, Heavenly Father, uh, to have a testimony Testimony, uh, because Jesus uh, has touched him one more time. Uh, now, Father, have you in the service a uh, uh, blessing the songs uh, in your word? And we'll praise you and thank you for it uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, well, praise God. All right. They're going to come and sing for us tonight. Nice to be back, Brother Burl. Praise the Lord. We've been down a few weeks, but we're we're still kicking. <laughs> well, uh, Will is going to sing a song about the Lord. He is our shepherd. We come through the holidays of Thanksgiving. The Lord has brought us through nearly another year, and we have a lot to thank you for. Amen. And as David tells us in the book of Psalms, one fifty-seven, seven and eight, he says we are supposed to play the harp. And enjoy the rejoicing of thanksgiving. Praise God. And I'll go with that. Amen. And uh, so we have a lot to thankful for, be thankful for. So Will is going to sing it, My Shepherd. Is that right? Also, want to send this song out to Sue and Bud tonight. Uh, I hope they're watching. <clears throat> I have a good shepherd who looks after me In daylight or darkness he's close by to see 
All the dangers I've taken From the paths that I trod I love my shepherd My shepherd is God In grief he's my comfort In trouble my stay In darkness my light For he'll show me the way He holds to my hand If in pitfalls I trod I love my shepherd My shepherd is God There's many lost sheep who have strayed from the fold. They're seeking for pleasures in diamonds and gold. Oh, may they come back and return to his fold. For he is their shepherd and they are his sheep. In grief he's my comfort, in trouble my stay, in darkness my night, for he'll show me the way. He holds to my hand, if in pitfalls I trod, I love my shepherd, my shepherd is gone. I love my shepherd, my shepherd is God. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Well, that's his name. What would we do without our shepherd? <laughs> he got us and directed us, yeah. Well, we just come through Thanksgiving. I thought I'd sing this little bit of song, uh, thanking the Lord for what he's done for us and what he will do and what he said he promised he would do. But main thing, I'm hoping he would come back and take his church out one day. But I'm going to sing a song the Spencer's put out a few back in the 1980s. And... Uh, called the Old Family Bible. There's an old family Bible on the table pages are worn and they're hard to read. Now this family Bible on the table, it brings to me a golden memory. I can sit a family around the table yes, as we read the Bible one by one. I can hear Mama softly singing Rock of ages, rock of ages Put for me At the end of day when work was over And the evening meals were blessed and done Dad would read to us 
the family Bible. Mom would sing the rock of ages, clip for me. I can see the family around the table as we read the Bible one by one. I can hear Mama softly singing, rock of ages, rock of ages, clip for me. full of trouble Now you know this world be better be Each of us would have a family Bible And our mother singing Rock of Ages Cliff for me I can see the family around the table As we read the Bible one by one I can hear Mama softly singing Rock of Ages, Rock of Ages, clip for me Rock of Ages, Rock of Ages, clip for me Bless his name! <laughs> Praise God! Okay, Ron. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that God is able. You get one ready, Ron. <laughs> because it doesn't, it doesn't make any difference to him who you are, where you're at. He loves you. I think of Peter a lot of times. Especially whenever you talk with people, they'll look at you and they'll say, well, I'm not worthy. I'm not fit. God couldn't love nobody like me. But you know, Peter went and preached to the Gentile people as far as the Jewish people was concerned it was against the law. But you see, Jesus had just fulfilled the law. Every bit of it, all of it, was fulfilled in Christ. And Jesus, when God showed him a vision, he let down a sheet in front of him. Mm -hmm. Had all kinds of four-footed beasts and animals. And he said to Peter, Peter, rise up, kill and eat. But Peter says, not so, Lord. I've never had anything common or unclean touch my lips. And he, God says, now what I've cleansed, call thou not unclean. Think of that. My cause, as far as God is concerned, God can clean you up. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've been into. God can clean you up if you will only allow him to do it. But you see, it's in your hands. It's not in God's. It's in your hands. Whenever you will step out and say, okay, God, I'm ready. And you repent. How do we do that? He tells us in the book of Romans 10, 9 and 10. He says, if we'll confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. What we do, we confess. We confess uh, that he took our place on the cross of Calvary in the mind of God. Whenever Jesus died on the cross, uh, we was in him. Amen. In him. How did, how did God do it? I don't know how God done it. I, I'm not that smart. But we were in Him. And He took our place. 
So, you see, whenever he looked up and he said it's finished, he didn't mean it was partly done. He meant that it was all done. Everything was taken care of. Everything. So you see, as far as God was concerned, if people would only repent, there is nothing or nobody that's unclean if we'll repent of our sins. But you see, that's our part. We can't save ourselves, but we can repent of our sins and turn away from them. And then God will see that we are able my, he takes and he writes our name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Woo. Remember reading one day where he sent the disciples out uh, and to uh, heal the people, to cast out demons. Uh, and whenever they came back, they was all excited because of all the things that they'd seen happen. Uh, and my Jesus looked at them and he says, I held Satan as lightning from heaven. But he says, don't be excited or don't be glad because of that the devil was subject to you in my name. But be excited, be happy because your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. <laughs> you see, Peter told Cornelius, my... He said, I perceive that God is no respecter of person. Why? Because Cornelius got saved. Mm -hmm. You see, a Gentile, my one that was supposed to be an unclean, uh, but God accepted him because uh, he repented. And uh, I'd like to look back for just a little bit. Uh, am I into the Gospel of John? I read one verse of Scripture, and it says, And many of the Samaritans of that day believed on him, and for the saying of the woman which testified. You see, God wants us to testify to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. You see, again, here, this, the Jewish people wouldn't have nothing to do with the Samaritans. Uh, they would walk all the way around the land of Samaria. I traveled several miles uh, uh, to keep from going across to, uh, the land uh, my, and just have a few miles to go. They didn't want nothing to do with them. But you see, Jesus went to the well, and whenever he got there, he was tired from his journey, and he sat down. And his disciples went into town to get something to eat, and while they were gone, there was a woman come to draw water. And Jesus looked at her, and he says, Give me a drink. And she looked at him, and can't you imagine that Jewish people wanted nothing to do with those Samaritans? Yeah. Nothing. And she looked at him and he says, she says, I don't understand. You being a Jew, you ask a drink of water of me? And Jesus looked at him and said, if you'd have asked me, I'd have gave you living water. Well, glory. <laughs> I mean, listen, God wants you to drink uh, uh, that living water. Mm -hmm. My, and that's right. Uh, it'll bubble up inside you. Uh, you'll be excited. Why? Because you know that you've been set free. And so, uh, as Jesus talked to the woman, he looked at her and he says, go bring your husband. She looked at him and says, I don't have one. He says, I know you don't. But you've had five, and the one you've got now is not yours. <laughs> and so, you see, the same thing was happening in that day that's happening today. But God still, Jesus still forgave her. And he'll forgive you. It doesn't make any difference who you are. He'll forgive you. And you see, when Jesus forgave her, I'm cutting the law, leaving a lot of it out, uh, uh, but I, I want to get the main point in. Uh, whenever Jesus saved her, 
she set down her water pot and went back into town. And whenever she went back into town and says, many of the Samaritans of the city believed on him, on Jesus, because of the testimony of this woman. My, my. Can't you imagine? Now that woman had lived such a loose life that the women of the city wouldn't even go with her to the well. She had to go by herself in the heat of the day. They usually went early in the morning or later in the evening, but here she was at the, in the middle of the day. You see, you think, well, I'll make it. Honey, not unless you repent, you'll make it, all right, but it won't be to heaven. You've got to repent. Jesus wants us to repent and to testify. Somebody said, well, I don't understand. It, it seems like that God will take an old drunk and he'll save him and he'll call him into the ministry and it seems like that he goes out and he sees a lot of people saved. This is true. Why? Because everybody knew that old drunk and he wasn't trying to hide a thing because he told them, I'm not what I used to be. You see, time has made a change. Well, praise God. And so I want you to know today that Jesus is still in the saving business and he'll save you if you'll only allow him to. But you see, you've got to ask him to. I'm going to pray. Brother Ron's going to come sing for us to take us off with a song. Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, reach out. Touch those that are there. God, bring them in while there's still time and an opportunity. God, we truly believe that the time is so short. And so I'm asking you, God, uh, to reach down and convict people to, of their sins, uh, save the lost, heal the sick, uh, and we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Brother Ron. I'm a poor welfare and stranger. While traveling to this land below, there is no sickness, toil, or danger in this present world to which I go. I'm going there to see my father. I'm going there no more to roam. I'm just going over Jordan. I'm just going over. I know dark clouds are gathering over me. I know my pathway steep and rough. We go to the field, lay out before me. <laughs> We're weary, I no more shall be. I'm going there to see my mother. She said she'd meet me when I come. Yeah. I'm just going over her. I'm just going over home. I want to sing salvation story in concert with the blood stained band. I want to wear a crown of glory when I get there to that good land. I'm going there to see my classmate who passed before. Me one by one, I'm just going over Jordan. I'm just going over home. I know my trials will soon be over. This form will lay beneath the sod. I'll drop the cross of self denial and enter in my home with God. I'm going there to see my Savior who shed for me his precious blood. I'm just going over Jordan. I'm just going over home. Amen. Praise the Lord. We'll see you next week. <laughs>